Sorry. <laughs> Once again, not ready. the weekend with a little bit of Black Sabbath. And basically that's what this video is about. This video is all about is where I <clears throat> Artist Spotlight by Greg Gannon. Black Sabbath. Now, um, actually this is kind of a, not even so much of Artist Spotlight as it is a, let's shine some light on some albums that were probably, you know, everybody knows War Pigs and everybody knows you know, Iron Man and all those popular songs by freaking Black Sabbath. So I, I wanted to shine a light on Sabotage just because that's an album. That I, I go back to that point where I just like, okay, so you're looking for a CD that you can actually play or, you know, and not have to, not have to change. Just throw it on and listen to it. You're going to go cruising around for like an hour or something like that. I'm saying pick up Sabotage, put that in your CD player. You got songs like Hole in This Guy. There are there are an intense amount of songs that are awesome. Symptom of the Universe is on this album, which is, a, you know, a, that's probably the one song on this album that if you are, let me say, I'm not saying not a fan, but you've heard Black Sabbath before and you're not sure if you want to listen to more. I didn't pick up Sabotage. It's a good album to pick up if you want to just listen to some good music. And Symptom of the Universe, that's one that you're going to know. Megalomania is on there, which is a pretty cool song. Then that just rolls right into freaking Thrill of It All, which is a really good rock song, I think. Am I Going Insane is probably the pop, poppy pop thing. And then they got the writ at the end, and the writ is is uh, is my shit right there. A nice long eight, eight minutes and 44 seconds. Eight songs on this album. It's a quick pickup. Just pick that thing up and just just listen to it. Sabotage is probably one of the more underrated Black Sabbath albums that that's out there. Everybody kind of goes for those poppy poppy hits and everything like that. But this this album right here, I think, is is Ozzy had done doing some of his finest works. His finest works. Now, when you talk about Black Sabbath, you can't just talk about Black Sabbath with Ozzy. You got to talk about Black Sabbath with Dio as well. So that's kind of why. I'm kind of splitting this up between two different albums and two different albums that, you know, I don't know, two different albums that are kind of like, I don't know. Let me just say that they're not the they're not the front runners. Let me put them, let me I guess let me put it that way. If somebody if somebody mentioned Black say hey uh, have you heard any of the Black Sabbath Dio? I think the first thing that they're going to tell you is uh, is uh, they're going to say. Oh, uh, Heaven and Hell, you know, definitely. Anything off of Heaven and Hell, that's Ronnie that's right James Dio, you know, that's that's the go-to album. And I'm not saying anything bad about that album at all. In fact, it's probably the heavyweight champ of his albums. Definitely, I want to say two completely different bands. They're not completely different because the music is very similar. But, uh, uh, you know, they're different bands because, you know, hey, it's Ronnie James Dio. And, and you know, Dio is Dio. Ozzy is Ozzy. Ozzy is this is a little bit of the writ. Kind of skipped off to this one because I want to try it. It's just sabotage is just a it's just good, you know? It's that little creepy little bass going on. Oh, ah. <laughs> but I'm giving you the bookends, you know, I give you a hole in the sky to 
to start off with the writ. The writ is what wraps the album up. Um, believe it or not, I bought this on cassette in a, in a, in a, at a gas station back, you know, when they used to sell cassette tapes at the gas station. And it was like four or five dollars or something like that, where the rest of the normal cassette tape would go back, would be like like a CD is nowadays, nine ninety nine or twelve ninety nine, in between that range. But this was like four ninety nine or five bucks, and I was like, yeah, Black Sabbath. So I got that and I put it in whatever car I was driving at the time. I think it might have been the Death Scort, that eighty four, was it the nineteen eighty four Death Scort I was driving around? That boxy piece of shit that died in Cleveland. I left it there. I got on a bus and I fucking abandoned the death score in Cleveland. <laughs> You're welcome, Cleveland. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> and then I, I just fucking threw everything I owned on a bus and went to Atlanta. That's how much fucking Cleveland sucked. But anyway... I digress. Uh, <laughs> Black Sabbath. Anyway. Well, anyway, like I was saying, you know, there's the Ozzy... Sabbath and the Dio Sabbath, and you gotta you gotta pick your things there. You don't have to pick a side though, and that's the that's the thing. It's like, oh, do you like Ozzy Dio, or Black Sabbath, or do you like Dio? Because they're both fucking good, man. Seriously. But uh, anyway, like I said, I'm gonna review two, and this is uh, this is uh, I'm gonna move on from here and kind of put on the the other thing. What do I got here? I should have this kind of worked out. Let me see if I've got it worked out as well as I... No, that's not what I want to do. This technology. I could have probably very well made some sort of weird playlist where I could just skip ahead to it. But this is just as good, I think. I don't know. Technology is so cool now, you can just summon music. <laughs> but anyway, there's a difference between Ronnie James Dio and freaking the way Ozzy sings. Absolutely, Ronnie James Dio brings some kind of interesting present presence to him but anyway this album is called the humanizer all right it was released in 1992 in the very very beginning stages of the whole grunge music era you know 1992 think about how much time has gone by that black sabbath has been together and all that and then they released this while everybody was making their three minute 40 second songs of grunge, rock, and everything like that. These guys decided we're not just gonna. <laughs> I can't help myself. I get too fucking carried away and excited when I listen to these guys. But anyway, do human do humanizer. It was a, a Paco Rodriguez Chinchilla Gonzalez was the one that turned me on to this album, and uh, you know, I mean, I wasn't like I wasn't gonna buy it anyway. I was a huge fan of Heaven and Hell, and Heaven and Hell is a great album. If you haven't heard that Black Sabbath, then I don't know what's wrong with you. If you like metal, then you should be listening to stuff like that, Mob Rules as well, you know, all that shit. But uh, it was '92, and it was several years after Heaven and Hell came out. Several fucking years. It was like the, the equivalent of. How much time was wait? How much time went by between the making of Alien and Alien Two was what was the the difference between what happened with you know Heaven and Hell and then the long wait to to, to release Dehumanizer. So I was cautiously pessimistic, I guess you could say, about the fact that it had been a long time since these guys had done anything, and I was a little concerned that maybe Dio's voice wasn't as good as it used to be. Quickly dispelled Dio. Dio sounded fucking awesome from up until his very fucking last day. But anyway, so you know what I did? What I normally did when I was cautiously, cautiously pessimistic, I waited for Paco to fucking uh, listen to it, and then uh, he and uh, you know he he fucking he not only not only did I have to actually have to say, hey dude, did you pick that album up? Nah, dude called me immediately. He said, have you have you heard the fucking Dehumanizer yet, man? I was like, nah, man, I haven't picked it up, man. How's it? How is it? He's like, dude, it's fucking metal. It's fucking metal. And it was like, all you have to do is those two fucking words. It's fucking metal. 
it's like just, just, it reaches you. You know, when it, when he says that, I was like, it's fucking metal, huh? That means you know, it's fucking metal. Is that what you're saying? It's fucking metal, oh, dude. That's awesome. It's like the best review you could give a fucking album. <laughs> it is too, isn't it? It's fucking metal. <laughs> the worst was like when Metallica released Load, and we were like listened to that shit, and we were just like, dude, this was fucking. Th these guys used to be really fucking awesome. They paved the fucking way for. They didn't pay you anything. They, but they, they were slash legends. Thrash, thrash legends. Sorry, but they, and, they, and then they made fucking load, and it was just like you know. I think that was around the time when, you know, that shit was happening. It was like it was like just around that era, and you know, so used to disappointment, and everything was grunge. Then everything was going grunge. Everything was going grunge. So for a band to come out and just be like, you know what, we're going to release something that's just fucking completely fucking metal. You know, it's not grunge. This is fucking metal. <laughs> so, and that's what they did, you know. So, but, you know, their eeriness and the spell casting and that, that's, I, I think that that, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I, can I skip ahead to a song that's, I don't know, I can't though, because, uh, Hang on. All right. Some of it... You know what? Just pick the fucking album up. If you're a fan of metal... And then... Here's the thing, all right? The second song on the album is called After All. And this is how they... This is how they started. I know this is like overly, overly, overly reviewing shit. But fuck it, I like music. Fucking eerie, right? I heard this and I was like, this is fucking eerie. This is like, I feel like it's Halloween right now and shit. And it, it, it is, it is, it's creepy. The way he says. So anyway, that's a sampling of what the the hell's going on here on this fucking dehumanizer album and that's basically the equivalent of what it means to be fucking metal um and you know metal's not dead there's still a lot of people in the background machine head and a lot of people who are making very wonder wonderful fucking efforts to fucking keep metal alive around mastodon is making some really good shit and uh lamb of god i don't think i'm as much of a fan of those guys as a lot of people are but they're, they're still doing things but as far as mainstream metal is concerned there's not that much out there anymore. Like mainstream meaning, mainstream meaning basically a metal album that everybody listens to. Kind of like uh, Appetite for Destruction. It's not metal, but it's rock. Appetite was one of those albums that you know you can throw on at a party and everybody would be like, yeah, the Black Album by Metallica. You can throw that on a party and everybody would be like, yeah, you don't have to think this off. Put on Lamb of God. There's gonna be a couple people at the party that year that are gonna be like, do we have to listen to this? It's scary. You know, that's usually, generally speaking, the kind of music I like. But, uh, anyway, so that's my Black Sabbath kind of thing going on there today. I just wanted to point the spotlight at a couple of albums that, uh, you know, yeah, generally speaking, don't get that much uh, attention just because, they, you know, they slide through the cracks. I like the slide through the cracks music, you know. It's the kind of music that kind of goes by the rest of the population because it's not popular and it doesn't have, I don't know, I'm not sure what it doesn't have that the, the rest of the population doesn't pick up on and go, and, and is like, this is fucking awesome. But uh, it's just shit that fucking, that gets me, you know? I mean, I'm not the only one out there. There's a lot of metalheads, a lot of metalheads out there. But uh, anyway, Black Sabbath. Ronnie James Dio and Ozzy Osbourne, two of the most unique singing voices that are going around out there. And, uh, and they just so happen to be affiliated with the same band. And, you know, Father Iomi. You just can't say enough about the musicians in the band. And, you know, if you don't, if you don't know the early Black Sabbath, you should get to know it. It's not, it's not what you would expect when you first, you know, think it. They, but uh, that, those early albums, uh, Sabotage, I mean, and all those war picks, and everything that they did, they, they paved the way for, for 80s metal. I mean... <clears throat> And there was a lot of good Judas Priest, you know, Judas, they'll, they'll tell you themselves, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, uh, Van Halen, all those bands will tell you that, that Black Sabbath was, like, definitely in their repertoire reason that they made music, you know. And, uh, 
I'm pretty sure this is a rumor and I might be talking out of my ass, in which case I talk out of my ass a lot. But I'm going to talk my, my, out of my ass a little bit. But the, the, the drop detuning, I think, which I already think I went to, is that uh, Iommi had a problem with his wrist and he couldn't press the frets at the normal tuning signature, so he dropped down to D. And that's kind of how we got like a revolutionary sound and uh, the creation of true metal. No, I don't know if any of that's true. But anyway, it sounds true. It sounds true. It feels true. <laughs> I think we should give Black Sabbath all the kudos that we can. Anyway, that's all I got for you this week. Love you all. Peace. Oh, love one another. Do something nice for somebody. And they keep on saying it until people do it. <laughs>